Congratulations, David, on getting into medical school. We're very proud of you on your accomplishment here. Um, I first want to ask, what got you interested in medicine from a Christian perspective? It's a good question. I think, I'll state it like this, it might feel a little bit controversial, but I think I would answer that and say power. And what I mean by that is power is the ability to change the world around you. And Christians are called to be world changers. We're called to be a light to the world. And I think that when you pursue medicine and you pursue something that increases your capacity there, it also increases your capacity to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you look at Jesus' life, you look at his ministry, especially in John 6, you notice all these people are following, right? It's because he did all these miracles. He healed people. And when you're able to heal someone, it gives you this incredible moment where someone is feeling so vulnerable, so afraid. When you're able to be there and love on them and be a solution to the problem they're facing and really roll back the effects of the fall, maybe even for just a little bit, that gives you an incredible opportunity to bless them, to love on them. I, I remember we had a surgeon recently for one of my family members and when we were at the day before the surgery, he actually started giving us the gospel and I was like, whoa, like how cool would that be? And when you become a doctor, you not only have financial power, you not only have social power, but you have the power to heal. And if you can channel all of those to love your neighbor, it's a huge resource for the kingdom. How do you take that power and ensure that it's not unbridled power and that it's properly channeled into humility? Yeah, I think that would be the answer to a lot of different questions is accountability. Like I always know I need to have three other guys who are always on my case about like, what are you spending your time on? What are you, you know, doing with your money? And it would be the same thing with medicine. How did Sattler College help prepare you in order to get into medical school? I think it would probably be in the mentorship, the class structure, and the class quality. So during my freshman year, we had a little preparation on here's how to get into medical school. It was very clearly laid out for me. Here are the steps that you need to take. Here's the JPA you need to be thinking about. The amount of time you need to prep for the MCAT, actually, when I was looking at the MCAT, I took like the 200 to 300 hours you need to be preparing. And I was like, okay, that's this much every day. And so it was clearly laid out, but I was never really like alone on the path. Like a huge part of that was getting research. And I had a lot of help getting my first internship, which as you know, like getting in is the hardest part about getting into the research world. Like once you're in, you kind of have the experience to like keep going. But that first internship is the hardest to land. Could have done that without Sattler. Additionally, there's the class structure. So I took my MCAT the summer after my junior year. And the way that it was structured was I was fresh on organic chemistry, I was fresh on physics, I was fresh on biochemistry. Gen Chem was the year before, and all throughout I'd be doing like a lot of biology. And so by the time I was taking the test, like I didn't have to waste a lot of time doing a bunch of refreshers. So I was set for that. And as you know, the MCAT is the, like the major rate limiting step of getting into medical school. So that was huge. And then also some of the classes here I took were really quality. It doesn't matter if you're fresh, but the classes are bad. The biochemistry class, the intro to biology class were so fundamental for that test, as well as some of the extension classes provided like organic chemistry and gen chem. That's great. And we put a lot of time into designing the curriculum so that you are at peak form right at the MCAT, so that's good to hear that. What advice would you give to an aspiring pre-med? I think I would give two pieces of advice. The one would be to think about it like a marathon, not a sprint. You want to take care of yourself. You want to make sure that even while you're working hard, you're not cutting out you know, spiritual input. You're not cutting out time with friends and just having a healthy degree of enjoying life and enjoying your youth. Because if you get to you know, 22, you're applying to medical school and all you've done is work for the last four years and you're thinking, all I'm going to be doing is working for the next four years, you're way more likely to burn out. The other thing I would say is you want to think about your application with kind of like two hands. One is kind of the hard side of like your MCAT, your GPA, you know, just kind of the raw objective statistics. But a huge component of getting into medical school is your personal narrative, right? You want to tell a story that's compelling. You don't want to just be like the cookie cutter applicant of, oh, I worked really hard. Here's my GPA and my MCAT, let me in. No, it doesn't work like that. All throughout your college story, you want to be thinking, what are the things that make me me? What are the reasons I want to pursue medicine? Who am I? What unique interests do I have? And then exploring those. Do you have you know, a heart for kids? Go work at an orphanage. Explore that and weave that into this compelling narrative. 
journal all the special events and all the special memories. So when it comes time to make that narrative, you can make a really compelling and really holistic portrayal of yourself. What is unique about Sattler College that someone should know who's thinking about applying? There's a lot that's unique about Sattler, I'm not gonna lie, but I think academically and even socially, the thing that helped me the most is actually the small size. So with you know the larger state colleges, there's a lot of potential to just kind of get lost in the crowd. But throughout it, I had way more access to professors than a lot of students would have if you know the, the ratio of professor to student is way more lower. Like I got to have lunch with them, I got to have breakfast and meet their families. And not only is that special, but I also had a lot more one-on-one -on -one time where I was asking them all these questions and just benefiting from all their wisdom on the subject. Additionally, when I went through biology, again, it wasn't like it was me in this class of, you know, like 50 other people. There was there was five of us. We were like this little biology unit. You know, we would solve problems together and support one another. And that close knitness allowed just a lot of moral support as well as academic support. So I think the, the small class size actually helps a lot and makes that very unique. You did very well on your MCAT exam. So you scored in the 98th percentile of students who take the MCAT, which I've bragged about you uh, because that is higher than the typical Harvard medical student gets who goes in, into medical school there. So you did exceptionally well there. And uh, actually two others who have taken the MCAT have also done ex extremely well. So Sattler's been developing a great track record in terms of producing academic rigor uh, on behalf of taking these standardized tests like the MCAT. Specifically regarding the MCAT, how did you, you find your Sattler courses prepared you, especially for some of the reasoning and critical uh, thinking skills that I know they test on? I think a lot of the courses that I did in STEM were much more like problem solving. Like there's a lot of error in conventional learning where it's like... And by, and by STEM you mean science, right, technology? Right, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, yeah. right? It's, uh, you know, there's a major flaw in, in preparing for something like medicine if you're just taught, you know, read this book or listen to this lecture and then tell me what I said back. And you never take that extra step of like, how does this information apply to this patient? How does this information applied to this engineering problem and that's a whole different thought process. One is memory, one is problem solving. And there was a huge problem solving emphasis in a lot of my courses. I remember some of the, the chemistry problems on the MCAT, I was like this is nothing compared to like what I had to go through in college. Like if you can really hone in being able to solve problems under you know intense time constraints then it makes those big tests a little bit less intimidating. One of the experiences that I had going through college and medical school was the sense of worship that I felt like, and I always say that I've worshiped God more in my biology and med school experiences than I ever have in any other setting. Talk to us about your experience of relating better to God through your experience of studying mm -hmm. biology and chemistry and preparing yourself to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. I think you can just see God's mastery and his genius when you study biology. Like you'll encounter all of these different problems with like, you know, biological systems, they take a lot of work and they have all of these, you know, these uh, errors that can happen, like, you know, how DNA shortens, but there's always this clever solution. There's always this clever way that God solved the problem and you dig deeper and you peel back the layers and you see engineering principles, you see turbines within the cells, you see pumps in the cardiovascular system. And it's, it's almost just as you discover more about a watch, you learn how can there not be a watchmaker? And someone who took so much time, so much care, and so much detail to give us these bodies that you know, can feel pleasure, that can have this wonderful range of motion. And you're able to see a designer who has been so considerate when he was constructing us. And I think even apologetically, like a lot of the um, criticisms of, of Christianity tend to be a little bit more the naturalistic or scientific, but I often feel very well prepared to answer those. And just like, you can give tons of examples of how like, you know, hey, you can't explode a print shop and get the dictionary. Like, why would you expect something that's way more complicated, like the human body to come from some, you know, deep water vents or something? Well, congratulations again, David, on getting into medical school. We're really proud of you. You worked very hard and uh, so happy to see uh, that you've got in so early in the process. You got in November, which was really great to see into an excellent medical school and just so excited to see what, what God does in your life through this. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all your help.